Okay, now in this example, we are told that the graph of the function f of x is equal to negative 2x cubed minus 16x squared minus 10x plus uh, 28. And it's sketched below. Okay, so there's the sketch below. And the first question is to calculate the x coordinates of the turning points of the function f. So the turning points are very easily calculated. We just make the derivative equal to 0. The derivative of this function is equal to negative 6x squared minus 32x minus 10 is equal to 0. And now all we need to do is to solve this equation. Now, first of all, I'm just going to take out a 2 as a common factor. They can, 2 can divide into everything. So I get a negative 2, actually. So everything is going to be, di be divided by negative 2 to give me 3x squared uh, plus 16x minus or plus 5 is equal to 0 divided by negative 2 still stays 0. Now this can go into two brackets okay and uh, the two brackets I have to solve the one will have a 3x in it okay and the other one will have will it be both will be positive yes the other one will have x plus 5 in it okay and then this one will be 1. And why do I say that? Well, because 1 times x is x. 3 times 5 will give me 15. So the 1 plus that would give me the middle term 16. While the first and the last will give me 3x squares. Sorry, the first and the first, the last and the last will give me 5. There we go. Those are the two solutions. If you don't know how to do these brackets, go look at the previous videos where we do uh, factorize these or just use your formula x is equal to negative b plus minus the square root of b squared minus four, minus 4ac over 2a you use that formula that's a lovely formula so we get two answers here we get that x is either equal to negative a third or x is equal to five okay so the next question asks us, calculate, sorry, this is negative 5, okay. Um, next question, calculate the x-coordinate of the point at which this function is a maximum, okay. How can we find a maximum? Okay, now, whenever we have a turning point for a function, that turning point is either a maximum or it is a minimum. So this function shape, this, this has got a negative shape, there you see. So this point would be a negative and that point would be, sorry, uh, uh, so this point would be a minimum and that point would be a maximum. So a turning point is always a local minimum or a local maximum and what I just mean by it is that in its little neighborhood it's right on top or in its little neighborhood of all the points surrounding it it is the one right at the bottom if it's a minimum or right at the top if it's a maximum that is called a local minimum or maximum but these are the turning points we find these turning points by taking the derivative and making it equal to zero However, um, they are the minimum and maximum points for the function fx. Now we're told to find the derivative, the maximum for the derivative. So when we did the derivative, this is what we got. Okay, The derivative, this was the derivative f of x derivative of fx and we see that this has got a negative shape and it's a quadratic function so this one looks like this it goes like that okay if I were to draw the derivative that's what it would look like now what I want you to notice is that it too has a maximum the derivative itself has a point where it has an absolute maximum 
and if I go down and see which point it corresponds to, it corresponds to in the inflection point. Okay, so the point where the derivative has its maximum um, is the inflection point. So how do we find it? Well, to find the maximum for the derivative it just means we're trying to find the turning point for the derivative. And the turning point for the derivative is where the derivative's derivative is equal to zero. So we find we have that f of x we said was negative 6x squared negative 32x negative 10. So this one's derivative, the second derivative will then be negative 12x minus 32 and this must be made equal to zero. So 12x negative 32 equal to zero gives me x is equal to 32 over negative 12. When I simplify that I get 16, uh, 4 can go into both of those. 4 goes into here 8 times and into there 3 times. It's negative 8 over 3 or negative 2 and 6, 6, well 6 repetitively. Okay, that is the x coordinate of the turning point. One thing you will also notice is that this point is exactly halfway between these two points. Okay, let's test that. To find the midpoint between two values, I add them together and divide by two. So I say negative a third plus negative five over two gives me negative one over three minus 15 over 3, that's where I get the 5 from, uh, 15 divided by 3, okay, and this gives me negative 16 over 3, negative 1, negative 15 gives me negative 16 over 3, divided by 2 is negative 16 over 8, okay, uh, sorry, negative 16 over 6, not 8, okay, uh, 3 times 2, and that gives me 2 divides into negative 16, negative 8 times, and 2 divides into 6, 3 times, so negative 8 over 3, that's what I had right here, isn't it? Okay, which I simply showed you here that the inflection point is the point that is exactly halfway between the two turning points. So if you have the two x coordinates for the turning points, the point halfway between them would be the inflection point. Cool. Something interesting. Hope you enjoyed it. See you later.